Hi guys. A um, lot of lot of lot of uh, talk going back and forth this morning on uh, keto and vegan, and I've been looking at some of the other channels and stuff, and I just wanted to share with you guys uh, some stuff that I I thought was important on the ethics behind is ketogenics ethical? Is it um is killing animals and eating animals and stuff ethical? There's some things that I pulled up. Uh, Genesis 9.3, it says, uh, Just as I gave you green plants, I now give you everything. And then, that was the dominion that was given to man over the land. In the Bible, many times it says, uh, Given dominion over the land and animals. Not to abuse, though. Not to abuse. Again, the law of performance and ordinance. Levictus. Old Testament, third book. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron, There are animals you can eat. If the animal has hooves split into two parts, and if the animal chews the cud, you may eat the animal. Pigs are not an option, really. A lot of places in the Bible have talked about how dirty pigs are and how they just eat everything. It didn't matter if it was a dead animal. It didn't matter. They're very, um, what did they call them? They just, they're like, uh, they're like catfish, they're scavengers. They'll eat whatever it takes to, to get nutrition. Um, pigs are not an option, dirty. Uh, that's from Joel Olstein. Uh, also said it in the Bible as well. Camels, rock badgers, rabbits, not an option. Fish, sea, anything with scales and fins are okay. Because it was thought if there's not scale and fins on them, one or the other, that it was the devil, that it was evil, that it would poison the body. Birds are frowned upon. Bugs that have joints above their feet that can jump, that don't drag their bellies on the grounds, they can fly. They're okay. No bugs that crawl. No crawling animals. Exodus was Exodus was the the precursor to Levictus. In Exodus, Moses led the Israelites in the building, in, in Moses led the Israelites in building the tabernacle. Levictus came after Exodus because that was the Lord's way of uh, basically teaching the priests how to live, how to offer, how to. Um, conduct themselves around the tabernacle so i was talking to a Pente uh, pentecostal guy that actually teaches um religion on facebook and he said we have problems too they're vegan pentecostals and he said i don't even understand how that's a an, a problem because he said after the flood during passover the lamb was offered as nutrients and he said i don't know how many times jesus even served his disciples bread and fish he washed their feet. He gave them food. And there were animal products involved. In the very, very beginning, it was just fruit and vegetables. But over time, during certain situations, it was given dominion. It was given the, given the rights to use animals as nutrition. The sustainability, especially after the flood, was just not there. So, with that being said, it also said not to abuse animals. Not to beat them, not to hit them with things, not to yell and scream at them, not to mass murder them. So I do agree to an extent that we do a lot of damage with the mass production of animals and it should be cleaned up a lot. So, sorry for the title of this video being a trigger, but uh, I had to get the message out there that there are plenty of places in the Bible that you'll see vegan people not talking bad about them. They won't recite the whole thing. They won't talk about that it was given... Uh, as an option for nutri nutrition, that it was not frowned upon. And I don't know how many vegan people call themselves Christians and say that they follow the Bible and stuff like that when they contradict the exact word that it says. And uh, anyway, um, I feel good about what I'm doing, and I'm not going to change. I appreciate your time, guys. Keto on.